In this video I will show you step by step each part and its function in the test setup to show you how it might be possible to visualize the time differences when light travels from A to B in one direction compared to a regular constant high speed movement in combination with a complete turn of the whole device in the opposite direction. In first place we need a light beam splitter and this shows you my solution of how to split a light beam into two light beams, and back to one. If adjusted well, and you focus on the window in screen, A, then you will see an interference pattern in that window. See the link below, if you want more information about this light beam splitter. This is how the image of the interference pattern looks like. A picture, of my light beam splitter. The light beam splitter seen from a different view. I will now going to add prisms that could make changes in the speed of light visible. But first I will show you what I am going to use prisms for. You see here symbolically a piece of glass. That I have placed at an angle of 45 degrees. A beam of light. Will about pass through this piece of glass. As shown. If I divide this piece of glass into two separate pieces of glass as shown, then light will pass through in about the same way. If I now slide the right piece of glass upwards, then the total thickness of both pieces of glass becomes less than before. If I remove the top part of the right piece of glass, and the bottom part of the left piece of glass, then it becomes clear that I can replace the pieces of glass with two prisms. I'm now going to add prisms to the light beam splitter, in a manner as shown in the previous video. The light beam splitter with prisms. Seen from above. On this drawing, I attach the prism number 2 and 4, to a high speed up and down mechanism. For a better view and explanation, I move everything within the center line, enlarged to the next drawing. The enlarged view. If I now move the mechanism upwards, then the total thickness of prism 1 and 2, will be the same as the total thickness of prism 3 and 4. In that case the interference pattern will not change at all regardless of where the mechanism is located. On the next following video, I will explain and show you a previous test setup, with which I will demonstrate later on, that the interference pattern does not change, when I move the prisms back and forth. The test setup. I will show you what's behind, this. This is the lamp, screen, A, and the first piece of glass to split the light. The first two prisms, 1 and 2. The first two prisms, 1 and 2, located on top of the plates. The second two prisms, 3 and 4. The second two prisms, 3 and 4, located below the plates. The second piece of glass to combine the light. Screen, B, the camera, as the eye, and the part to adjust the piece of glass. The image of the interference pattern is going from this camera to this monitor, on where the image with the interference pattern is visible. This part, is connected to this part, and they are connected to a wire, that runs along the table to a pulley, and from there it runs on the other side along the table to the parts again. The parts can then, be moved back and forth by turning the pulley. The test setup in practice. I will now demonstrate, that the interference pattern will stay steady in the window, when I move the prisms back and forth by turning the pulley. I apologize for the fact that the interference pattern in the video, is not complete steady in the window, but I just do not have the right tools to build a perfect test setup.
This drawing is an explanation of why the window with the interference pattern on the monitor is moving back and forth. It's because the total thickness of glass is changing while moving the prism. Once again, the interference pattern is almost steady in the moving window on the monitor, but not on the monitor itself. If you want the interference pattern to be steady on the monitor instead of in the window, then you have to turn prism 3 and 4, a bit. I will show you how it looks like. You can see that the interference pattern is now almost steady on the monitor. Now the most important part of my idea, explained. Now the lamp, has to act as a flash lamp. And this can be done by placing a mechanical shutter with fast shutter speed, in front of the lamp, which will be activated by the up and down mechanism. Assuming the arm with prism 2 and 4 moves up and down at 3000 times per minute. When prism 2 moves upwards and reaches exactly this point, the shutter will then be activated. The lamp then acts like a flash lamp through the shutter at 3000 flashes per minute. When this light beam reach A, the other light beam reach A, as well. The light beam will then travel until it has reached B. Light needs time to travel from A to B. In the meantime the prism with number 4, which was on this place before, has moved up during that time, a little bit. The result that prism 4 has moved upwards will be that this distance is shorter than this distance. The total distance of prism 1 and 2 is longer than the total distance of prism 3 and 4. Because it passes through less glass than the other, this light beam will be ahead of the other light beam, and the result will make the interference pattern disappear. While the mechanism is still moving at a constant 3000 times per minute, we have to readjust the last second piece of glass to get the interference pattern back. We will then turn the whole device, while still moving at a constant 3000 times per minute, in the opposite direction. If the speed of light in this direction, due to some reason, is different than the speed of light in the previous direction, then there will be a time difference that the light beam reaches B, and that will move prism 4, more or less, which will change the total thickness of prism 3 and 4, and that results in changing the interference pattern, by moving up or down. So far, I have only shown an up and down test setup, but I think it is better to build a rotating one. Here you see an example of a rotating one. But I think this is not a correct one, because the prisms reached by the light first, behave differently, with prism 1 not moving, and prism 3 moving. This is a better one, because the prisms reached by the light first, are not moving now. But also this one is not correct, because, if the rotating part has turned a few degrees, the angle of the prisms has changed, and that will change the direction of the light beams, which will change the interference pattern. And I think that what you see here, is the best solution for a rotating, one direction interferometer. As it is too difficult for me to draw a picture of this one, I will try to show it to you from beginning to end. Screen. A. With the opening. First piece of glass. To split the light. Prism 1. And next to it an opening for the other light beam. Prism 2.
First mirror Second mirror Third mirror Fourth mirror Prism three and next to it an opening again. Prism four. Second adjustable piece of glass, to combine the light lens and the camera. The part to adjust the piece of glass. Adjusting the interference pattern of this test setup. This is a drawing of the part that needs to be added to this test setup for a better operation because in this test setup one of the light beams travels a longer way than the other in the next video i will explain why it is needed and where it needs to be added you see here prism 1 on the outside and the opening on the inside the light beam passing through the opening will go to prism 3, located on the other side. The light beam through prism 1 will go to the opening on the other side. And here you see prism 3 on the inside and the opening on the outside. And that is the problem. Because the light beam that is first going through the opening on the inside, is going through prism 3, which is also on the inside. And the other light beam, is going from outside to outside. This is the location, on where the part needs to be added. This part is needed, to switch the light beam on the inside, to the outside, and the light beam on the outside, to the inside. The places of prism 3, and the opening, also have to be switched. So prism 3 on the outside, and the opening, on the inside. Which both, will improve the test setup. A short summary of the rotating one, as it is about the same as the up and down mechanism. Slow rotation, interference pattern not moving. Fast rotation, interference pattern disappears. Readjust, to get the interference pattern back. Turning whole device in opposite direction. For your information, the prisms I have used, are made out of one big prism. To get two identical groups of prisms, with the same thickness and angles. I split this large prism in half, and then I split it again, as shown. Then I combined 1 and 2, and 3 and 4. I don't know if it is working with separately, identical prisms. Look how sensitive this device is, when I put a weight on the table. I did the pre-research. It's up to you, now. Thank you, for watching this video.